Hi friends! Today I'm going to demonstrate how to make this beautiful, delicate dragonfly. My name is Sherry Ray. Welcome to Every Cake Tells a Story. My goal is to help you build skills, gain confidence, and love others through cake art. Or, as I like to say, spread love like icing. Today's cake topper is dedicated to my friends Jake and Catherine and their son Jared. You'll hear more of their story as we go along. But first, what was I gonna make those dragonfly wings out of? I had three choices. I could use wafer paper. It'll hold its shape, but it's not very see-through. Then there's gelatin. It'll definitely be see-through, but it'd be hard to make that hold its shape. Finally, rice paper. It'll hold its shape, and it's kinda see-through. Rice paper for the win. All right, let's go make these dragonfly wings. I needed to start by softening the rice paper. I poured warm water onto my plate, then submerged the rice paper until it was nice and pliable. I always do this step just by feel and look. Is it wiggly? Then I pull it out. I blotted the bottom side with a paper towel to help speed up the drying time later, and stretched it out onto some parchment paper. I got it as flat and smooth as I could. It will shrink a bit and wrinkle up some, but I wanted to prevent any unnecessary wrinkles. I added a drop of gel color to maybe one to two tablespoons of water. No exact measurement, I just wanted to dilute my gel. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with yellow wings or red, so I did both. I took that diluted gel and just painted each color across half my rice paper. I was careful not to have pools of water on the rice paper. That can be avoided by just spreading it out further or blotting up the excess. The yellow wasn't quite bright enough, so I added another drop of color and went over it again. I finished up by dabbing it once more before I popped it in the oven at the lowest temperature. And I checked on it every couple minutes. I cut it in half for the simple fact it would be easier to work with. You can see it's still a bit tacky, which is great because if it dries too much, it will crack while I cut it. Then I moved it to a piece of kitchen acetate so I could see through it. It felt a bit like fruit roll-up. It's rubbery and got that stretch and flexibility factor. Then I slid some wing templates underneath the acetate and traced them with my edible marker. After that, I went back in and added some of the lines you can see on the dragonfly wings. This dragonfly has a special story behind it though, so while I work on the wings, let me share that story because, after all, every cake tells a story. When Jake and Catherine found out they were expecting again, there was quite a mix of emotions. Four kids and four and a half years will do that to anyone. But when they welcomed their son Jared home, everyone was so excited. He was the first boy after all. But a few months later, a doctor noted that Jared had a small head. He had microcephaly. At one, Jake and Catherine were concerned because Jared wasn't sitting up and now he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. This put them on the path for physical therapy and they spent the next few years focused on Jared's physical needs through therapy. At three and a half, when Jared still wasn't speaking or really interacting with others, they had a new diagnosis, autism. This helped bring about more support but social and behavioral therapies don't often combine with physical therapies and Jared needed a lot of different types of therapy. Though he fit the criteria for cerebral palsy and autism, the doctors and Jake and Catherine were never really convinced that either of these were correct. And then last fall, they finally got their answer. Jared has CTNNB1 syndrome. In a nutshell, Within Jared's DNA, there was a spelling mistake on his CTNNB1 gene at conception. CTNNB1 is a relatively new discovery within the medical field, and these are some of the common symptoms. Only 200 people worldwide have been diagnosed with this, whether that's because it's not well known yet, or there really are not that many people out there with it is yet to be determined which is why Jake and Catherine really want to help create more awareness around it. This is important because some who are diagnosed when they're younger are able to receive medications or medical interventions. 
Jared is one individual with CTNNB1 syndrome, but everyone's experience with it is so different, and the degree to which the symptoms affect them varies substantially. Okay, I do need to pause here so I can finish the dragonfly, however, there is a very, very important reason why the dragonfly is the cake topper for this. So stick around so you can hear that. After finishing drawing the wings, I had to cut them out. This was actually my second attempt at the wings because at first I added too much accuracy. Think junior high microscope drawing. Mine ended up looking like corn on the cob and that wasn't gonna fly. <laughs> Corn on the cob wasn't gonna fly. So cheesy. <laughs> I mean corny. <laughs> I still wasn't sure if I wanted red or yellow, so I made two sets of wings. They needed to finish drying, so I sandwiched them between parchment paper and put my son's light reading on it to help keep them flat. My oven was still warm, but not hot, so I slid it back into the oven to help speed it up. The wings were a bit warped, but that was an easy fix. Keeping them in that parchment paper, I went over them with my iron. I only needed a tiny amount of brown for the body of the dragonfly, so I dipped my piece into my Tylos powder and kneaded it in. Tylos powder helps fondant dry quicker and hold its shape better. After I had a little snake rolled out, I could start shaping it. I used my Dresden tool to divide the head, thorax, and body into three separate parts. I got the length right and then had to smooth it out once again. Time to add those wings. I had left extra paper on the tips so I had something I could push into the body, but I had a wee bit too much so I trimmed off the excess. Then I pushed it in. If you're enjoying this video, help me out and help others find it by clicking the like button. Next, I grabbed some wire to elevate this little guy. But first, the wire needed a bigger surface area within the figure, or it'll slowly work its way out of the top of the dragonfly. I always curl the tip of my wire before pushing it into something like this to prevent that. Then I could push it into the dragonfly. I had a paper towel roll ready and I slid the wire into it to hold it for me. I had to support the body with a little paper towel while it dried so it would harden and stay in place. I added a dab of water at each wing and the wire to help glue them in place better. The last step was to give the body that iridescent look. I dabbed a paintbrush into Sweet Sticks Pro White Luster Dust and tapped off the excess, then simply brushed it on. This is exactly why that Tylos powder was important. His little body is floating in the air. It's so cool. The dragonfly is a logo for ctnnb1.org. It's full of mystery and intrigue. How does it fly with those delicate little wings? It's so beautiful and iridescent. Catherine said this mystery and intrigue perfectly describes Jared. She said, imagine this 14 year old boy coming at you and giving you this full on bear hug. He's so full of love to give. Yet you're never quite sure because in the next moment he might be poking you or scratching you or pulling your hair. He's a dragonfly. The dragonfly has become a special symbol in their house. It's been less than a year since they finally got answers regarding Jared's condition and you can see how much the whole family loves him by how quickly they've embraced the dragonfly. This was a joint effort by all of their kids. Katie came up with the idea and bought the canvas. Jared painted it with Sophia's help, and Nadine made the wire dragonfly. In my next video, I'll be creating a cake with a pond and cattails for this little guy. I'll be sharing some stories about Katie, Sophia, and Nadine, and I can't wait to share them. Click right here, and I'll see you over there. Bye, friends.